Hello class, today we're reading Nancy Drew and the Clue Crew, Case of the Sneaky Snowman. This is a mystery book, so let's see if we can figure out the mystery. Chapter one, Puzzle in the Park. And now for the finishing touch, eight-year-old Nancy Drew said, she held out her hand. Carrot, please, George. Nancy's best friend, George Fane, dug into the pocket of her bulky blue parka. She pulled out something green and fuzzy. Then she stuck it into the face of the snowman with a crunch. Bess Marvin was Nancy's other best friend. She stared at the fuzzy green thing with wide eyes. You were supposed to bring a carrot for the snowman's nose, Bessie said. That's broccoli, Nancy said. My mom needed carrots for her catering job, George explained. Broccoli was the only veggie we had left. Nancy smiled. It was Tuesday morning and the best winter break ever. That's because it had snowed for two days straight. By the time Nancy, Bess, and George got to the park, it looked like a giant marshmallow sundae, perfect for building their first snowman of the year. Wait, wait, we're not finished yet, Bess said. The pom-pom on her red hat bounced as she jumped up and down. We forgot to name our snowman. How about Sherlock? Nancy asked. Sherlock, George said, wrinkling his, her nose. After Sherlock Holmes, the famous detective in the books, Nancy explained. We're detectives, so our snowman should have a detective name, right? Right, Bess and George said together. Not only were the girls detectives, but they had their own detective club called the Clue Crew. When a mystery popped up in River Heights, Nancy, Bess, and George were on the case. The friends stepped back to admire their work. Sherlock had Nancy's old blue scarf wrapped around his neck. Over his head were earmuffs. Bess built them out of two white powder puffs and a plastic headband. George stuck a pair of her dad's old rubber boots near the snowman's base. For his mouth and smile, Nancy used little round dog kibbles the kind she fed to her puppy, Chocolate Chip. Did we do an awesome job or what? Bessie sighed. We, George cried, you mostly just watched, Bess. Bess rubbed her thick red mittens together to keep warm. I told you I'm skating in the River Heights Ice Spectacular show this Saturday, she said. I can't get my hands cold. You're not skating on your hands, Bess, George said. She rolled her dark eyes. Sometimes I can't believe you're my cousin. Nancy sometimes couldn't believe it either. George had dark hair and brown eyes. She was a computer geek and proud of it. Bess had blonde hair and blue eyes. She loved building and fixing things. But now, Bess had something else to look forward to. A few days ago, she won a raffle at the ice skating rink. The prize was to skate in the ice show with Russian ice dancing stars Svetlana and Alexei Dubunov. On Saturday, Bess would wear a pretty costume and ice skates with pink pom-poms. Then she would skate the show like a star herself. It's okay, Bess, Nancy said. You made Sherlock's earmuffs. That was a big job. Bess stuck her chin out at George. Suddenly someone shouted, wipe out. Nancy, Bess, and George whirled around a boy, whirled around. A boy was riding a snowboard down the hill, straight towards them. They jumped behind Sherlock and all and all held their breath as the boy zipped by. He almost rode into Sherlock, George complained, and he didn't even say excuse me, Bess said. Nancy watched as the boy skidded to a stop at the bottom of the hill. He laughed as he picked up his board and walked away. Oh, forget about him, Nancy said. She pulled the zipper of her red parka all the way up to her chin. Let's go to the snack shack for some hot chocolate. With marshmallows, Bess added. The girls said goodbye to Sherlock. Their boots made deep footprints as they walked through the snowy park. Tons of kids were busy sledding and building snow people. But as the girls passed the playground, they saw something that made them stop. Between the slide and the swing was a purple and gold tent. That was never there before, Nancy said. She looked closer. Eight-year-old Toby Leo was standing in front of the tent. Toby was in the girls' third grade class at River Heights Elementary School. He usually wore a sweatshirt blue jeans and sneakers, but today he was wearing a fancy green turban and a gold cape. Wow, Nancy said. Toby looks like someone out of the story Aladdin. 
So does that tent, Bessie said. But what's it doing on the playground? I'll bet Toby is putting on some kind of play, George said. Let's ask him. As the girls walked closer, Nancy saw a sign pinned to the tent. Hot chocolate with marshmallows, one dollar. Are we lucky or what, George said. Hi, Toby, Nancy said. Can we have some? Stop, Toby said. He held out his hand like a school crossing guard. You must wait your turn. The flap of the tent swung open. A girl burst out with a big smile. Yes, she pumped her fist. I'm going to be an astronaut when I grow up. I'm going to the moon, the moon. Nancy, Bess, and George traded puzzled looks. What was going on in there? Toby folded his arms across his chest. Madame Coco Chocolata will see you now, he announced in a deep voice. Madame Chocolata, George whispered. Who is Madame Chocolata? Bess whispered back. Nancy stared at the tent. This was way too weird. I don't have a clue, Nancy said. She took a step toward the tent, but there's only one way to find out. Okay, what is going on inside of the tent? Let's keep reading. Chapter two, snow problem. Close the flap, a voice cried. It's freezing out there. The girls stooped to get into the tent. Nancy smiled when she saw their classmate, Deidre Shannon, inside. Deidre was sitting cross-legged on a blanket. She wore a gold turban, hoop earrings, and beaded necklaces all over, over her down jacket. On the blanket was a thermos, a stack of paper cups, and a bag of mini marshmallows. Hi, Deidre, Nancy said. What's up, George asked. Halloween was months ago. I am not this Deidre you speak of. Deidre said, I am Madame Coco Chocolata, teller of fortunes. Fortunes? Nancy, Bess, and George said together. Deidre's turban almost fell off as she nodded her head. Some fortune tellers read palms. Others read tea leaves, she explained. But I, Madame Chocolata, read the marshmallows in hot chocolate. Huh? George said. Deidre picked up the thermos and smiled. For just one dollar, you get a steaming cup of cocoa, she said, and your life's destiny. Nancy glanced sideways at her friends. Deidre, Sh Deidre Shannon always got whatever she wanted, which probably explained the fancy tent, but she was usually busy working on her website, dishing with Deidre. Whoever heard of reading marshmallows, Bess whispered. She's got hot chocolate, George whispered. Who cares what she does with it? Thanks, Deidre, Nancy said. We'll each have a cup and our fortunes. And soon you shall, Deidre said. As she poured hot chocolate into three cups, Nancy chatted about Sherlock. You should go and see him, Deidre, Nancy said. He's the best snowman ever. Really? What does he look like? Deidre asked. You're the fortune teller, Bess giggled. You tell us. Nancy jabbed Bess with her elbow. Deidre was taking this game very seriously. Sherlock has a blue scarf and a broccoli nose, Nancy said, and he's right near the water fountain, which isn't really a water fountain today because the water's frozen, George added. Deidre lined the white cups in a row. Quick, she said, I must read your fortunes before my trance breaks and before the mini marshmallows melt. Mm, they're getting their fortunes told. The girls sat cross-legged in front of Deidre. Madame Chocolata will read Nancy's fortunes first, Deidre said. She stared into a cup without blinking. I see a pizza in your future, a large pizza with extra cheese, Madame Chocolata predicts pizza for dinner tonight. If you say so, Nancy said, but my dad only orders pizza on Saturday nights. Next, Deidre said a little too loudly. That's me, George said. What do you see in my hot chocolate? Am I going to get that neat computerized watch I want? Nancy smiled. George loved computers more than anything. She even had a computerized toothbrush. I see a snowman, Deidre said slowly. She stared into the cup near the water fountain. Yeah, we just told you that, George said. Wait, Deidre said. She leaned over as she stared deeply into George's cup. The snowman is taking a long, long journey. He is walking, walking. 
George laughed and said, snowmen can't walk. Next, Dietrich cut in. Bess, that's you. Nancy said, this is too silly, Bess said, shaking her head. I don't want to play. I just want a cup of hot chocolate with marshmallows, please. Deidre narrowed her eyes at Bess. She waved her hands over the last cup of hot chocolate and said, I see a big ice show. I see someone falling on the ice and lots of people laughing and saying, what a klutz, what a klutz. What? Bess gasped. You mean I'm going to fall at the ice spectacular with Svetlana and Alexei Dubinov? It's in the marshmallows, Deidre said with a shrug. That will be $3, please. Have a nice day. The girls dropped into their dollar bills, dropped their dollar bills into a basket. They sipped their hot chocolate as they left the tent. Nancy, George, Bess cried. What if Deidre really can see the future? She already knew I was in the show. Who doesn't know, George said. She licked a marshmallow from her upper lip. You told practically the whole school and the world. Deidre is just doing this for fun, Nancy said. Come on, I want you to show you something. The girls finished their hot chocolate as they made their way over to Sherlock. Nancy pointed to their snowman and smiled. See, Nancy said, Sherlock didn't take a long journey like Deidre said. He's still where we left him. Bess smiled and said, you're right. I guess it was kind of silly. If anyone, it's a klutz, it's me, Nancy said. She pointed to a stain on her scarf. See, I already dropped hot chocolate all over myself. The girls watched as a bird landed on the broccoli nose. They giggled as he began to began pecking at it. At least somebody likes broccoli, George said. Let's go home now before my toes turn into toasticles. Nancy, Bess, and George left the park. They all had the same rules. They could walk anywhere as long as it was no more than five blocks from their house. And as long as they were together. Let's come back to the park tomorrow, George said. We can make snow angels and have a snowball fight. Maybe we can build a snow woman, Nancy said. Okay, Bess said with a groan. But from now on, let's bring our own hot chocolate. Can people read fortunes, Daddy? Nancy asked at the dinner table that night. Mr. Drew shrugged as he poured dressing over his salad. He was a lawyer and great at figuring things out. Some people say they do, he said. They read palms or tea leaves or marshmallows, Nancy said. Did you say marshmallows, Mr. Drew asked? Deidre says that she can read the marshmallows in hot chocolate, Nancy explained, but it didn't work. She said we'd have pizza tonight and we're having vegetable lasagna, Hannah said as she carried a casserole dish into the dining room. Hannah Gruen was Drew's housekeeper. Hannah had been taking very good care of Nancy since Nancy was three years old. That's when Nancy's mother had died. Hannah brushed Nancy's reddish blonde hair every morning until it shined. She made the best tuna sandwiches with tomatoes, and Hannah always smelled like sugar cookies, even when she wasn't baking. Yummy, Nancy said. She took a whiff of the hot steaming lasagna. Who needs pizza when we can have this? Just then the doorbell rang. Who could be that at dinner time? Mr. Drew asked. Nancy glanced at the clock in the dining room. It was six o'clock, sharp. Mr. Drew left the room to answer the door. When he came back, he was holding a big flat box. Did anyone order this? He asked. Nancy stared at the box. There was only one thing that came in a box like that. Pizza, Nancy gasped. No way. Maybe Hannah ordered the pizza, George said, to go with the lasagna. It was Wednesday morning. The girls were walking through the main gate of the park. It was so cold that they wore layers of fleece shirts under their parkas. Hannah said she didn't, Nancy said. She even called pizza paradise. They said someone ordered the pie at 5.30 and didn't leave a name. Oh my gosh, Bess whispered. Madame Chocolata said you'd have pizza for dinner and she was right. Nancy smiled as she shook her head. Daddy and I figured it out, she said. Deidre probably ordered the pizza herself to make it look like her fortune came true. But I saw Deidre at the mall yesterday, George said. She was trying on shoes with her mother and it was exactly 5.30. How do you know it was exactly 5.30? Nancy asked. George pulled up her sleeve to show a high-tech silver watch. Because I got this computerized watch I wanted, she said excitedly. I couldn't stop looking at it. Nancy's heart sank. She thought she had the whole thing figured out, but she didn't. If Deidre was trying on shoes at 5.30, she said, then she couldn't have ordered the pizza. 
Bess stopped walking, her eyes flashed with fear. If Deidre is right about the pizza, then she'll be right about me, Bess said. I'm going to fall on the ice in front of hundreds of people. Right, Nancy chuckled, and our snowman will take a long journey too. And if that's, as if that's going to happen, George laughed. Bess finally smiled too. You're right, she said. The only snowman who can walk is Frosty. The girls began singing, Frosty the snowman. Their singing stopped when they reached the water fountain. Nancy, Bess, and George looked around. Something was missing. Um, Bess, George, Nancy said. Where's Sherlock? Okay. And that's the first two chapters of Case of the Sneaky Snowman. So the three girls, Nancy, Bess, and George, visited a fortune teller. And the fortune teller told them that Nancy would eat pizza that night. That night, George would get a special watch that the snowman would take a long journey and that Bess would fall in her ice performance. So far, Nancy did get pizza for dinner and George did get the computerized watch. And at the very end of the chapter, the snowman isn't there anymore. So maybe that means, maybe that means the fortunes are true. We'll have to read the next chapter to see what happens. See you next time.